Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. So in my last video I talked about who solved the tangent line and area problem. It wasn't Newton, it wasn't Leibniz, <laughs> it wasn't Fermat or, or Cauchy or Weierstrass or any of those academics who came after Newton and Leibniz. And who was it? Well, it was I. Okay, I solved the tangent line and area problem. How did I do that? I did that through the holy grail of calculus. So what I, what I show you here is instantly the relationship between slope and area. Okay, so on the left-hand side there you see the slope of a non-parallel secant line. Okay, in other words, the slope, let's say, of this, this red line here. Okay, that's what you see. You see that slope. And... On the right-hand side, you see the arithmetic mean of all the y-ordinates, not under f, not under f, but under f prime. Okay, this here is f prime. In other words, you're talking about this area here. Okay, so this area here, inside here, is eight. Okay, and that's exactly right too. Right. So. Um, <clears throat> When you multiply both sides by h, you have the area. But in this form, we're saying what we're saying here is that this slope, this slope here, is equal to the arithmetic mean of all the y ordinates, of all these y ordinates. Okay, yeah, of all these y ordinates here and here and here, etc. All of those. Okay. So, in the, in the shaded region. Does that make sense? Okay, so now, uh, let's just see if we can just get rid of those lines. Can we? <laughs> uh, how do we move this thing out of the way? Well, I can't. All right. So, never mind. That's fine as it is. Well, it seems to have done it. Well done. Okay. Now, um, so that's what it tells you. So, in this one identity, I give you the relationship between a function and its derivative, okay? Okay, I give you the, the relationship. And this is 100% rigorous. It doesn't matter whether it's on uh, on a concave or, or a, a non-concave sur surface or if it's on the other side. It doesn't matter even if it's on this side. Okay, now in my applet, I've only provided that it works in, in this case, but there are a total of, I think, maybe eight combinations that you need to take care of. And always the area will be the sum of these two line segments, the the gold and the green. Uh, and depending where it is, it might be the difference on this side, okay? Because you, you'll you have an, a, a triangle that flips the other way. So, uh, but in, in any effect, in actual effect, it's always the sum of these two or the difference, one of the two, okay? So it's either the sum or the difference. Now, in my uh, in my article, I usually just list these as the sum, but it can be either the sum or the difference of those two lengths. And, of course, now what I've done here is I've shown you how you can get this in geometry. So in geometry, this uh, F1 length, divided by h is always the difference in slopes and f2 divided by h is always the derivative okay and that's basically what you see on this side the derivative where i'm pointing to with my cursor and the slope difference okay and i give you a brief explanation here which is very straightforward and i'm only showing you one case but there's a combination again i think a, a combination of at least eight different cases so if you were to fix up this applet, to which I'll give you a link, you'd have to uh, put in conditional statements like I have here, and I've only done it for I've only done it for this particular case. Okay, so I've said f1 uh, takes on a particular value depending on whether the y of the one point is greater than the other point or less. Okay, so because I have i issues, I'm, I didn't bother doing the rest, and what what this means basically is that 
in this particular condition, all you have to do is add these two. In another triangle, whether it be this way, in other words, a second, you might have a triangle like that, and uh, F1 and F2 separated like that. In this case here, it might be a difference, right? So uh, that's what I meant by saying that. Okay, so coming back to this now, we can define both the derivative, okay, the derivative, and also the integral, okay? So very few, well, actually no one before me realized that area is generally defined as a product of level magnitudes, not arithmetic means, but level magnitude. What that means is basically you're taking the ordinates, all these ordinate lengths, as I showed you earlier, finding their arithmetic mean, which in this case is 2, and then multiplying it by the interval width, okay? And the interval width also happens to be 2. But if we do that, now the interval width is 1, and the area is 3, okay? So I... It doesn't matter that the applet works fantastic. It just matters that you understand the idea. So, and you'll see that I've redefined the integral without Leibnizian S to this form. And you can evaluate any function. And yes, you could do that by putting in another function name here. So, for example, you could say log of x. Okay. And then work with that, right? So let's move this one away from here, see what happens. All right, so anyway, I'm not going to waste time on this. You can play with it and get it to work correctly. That the applet works correctly doesn't matter. The theory is true, okay? The theory that I'm giving you is true. So uh, let's see here. This is interesting. If we had to do this, put it on 1 and... Put this on 2, then we get 0.6935, right? Which is that value there, and that happens to be the logarithm. All right, so uh, the logarithm of 2, if I'm not mistaken. And if we move this to 3, uh, I think that would be the logarithm of 3 to the base 2. So if we say, and I haven't checked this, but where is logarithm? Yeah, oh, well, it's pretty close. And I don't know if I've if if I've actually made the applet work correctly, but you can check this yourself and go through it and see that it all works perfectly. So I want you to take note of this and become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. By the way, if you don't click like and and the YouTube channel doesn't grow, they are going to shut down the channel. Just this morning, I got another attempt. Uh, for example, I got a copy strike, and this copy strike, by the way, was because I used music from another video, which I've done many times in the past, but apparently this particular individual doesn't want me using his music, right? And I know who this individual is, and I won't go into the whole story, but... Believe it or not, uh, you can't trust anybody nowadays, not even family. So uh, what I'm saying to you is if you like these videos, save them, keep them because I sincerely doubt this channel is going to last because there are many attempts to shut it down. Right, so become a follower on Academia. This is my link, which I'll place in the details section. Tell your friends about this. Uh, again, click like and study the material because there's no way you're going to understand this stuff if you don't study it. And what I've told you basically just touches the surface. Okay, so what I've given you here is very superficial. For example, to understand this, you'd have to study my historic geometric theorem, which is a, a presentation of about 25 slides. Okay, I'll place a link to that in the details section for you too. And of course, it would be nice if you could donate something. There is a GoFundMe link, which I'll place in the link, this link here, uh, because I don't, I don't earn any money from my YouTube videos, by the way. I thought I was going to be earning, but I don't. Apparently, I haven't earned anything this year 
doesn't look like I'm going to earn it. In fact, it looks like the channel is going to shut down. So, um, because of people, uh, evil people trying to shut the channel down. So, I hope I've explained the, ha the Holy Grail to you correctly. Most of your professors won't know this stuff because they're absolute morons. And in fact, the very first professor who made a disgusting critique on Gora, a guy by the name of Professor Jack Hazinger, realized he was wrong, withdrew, withdrew the critique, but the damage was done, and the scumbag still hasn't apologized. Okay, so, um, but there are many in the mainstream who hate me and want to see my entire work wiped out. Okay, so they don't want you to understand calculus. They want you to learn limit crap, but as you can see, there are no limits being used yet. Where do you see limit being used yet? It doesn't get used anywhere, okay? And of course, uh, there have been some attempts to say this is the same as that garbage called the fundamental increment lemma, but it's got nothing to do with that. It doesn't use limits. It's in terms of slopes. And it was realized decades ago, uh, not in 2005, okay? As claimed in the talk section of that Wikipedia article. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. My name is John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.